Hi, you're watching Times Now. I coming to you from the inaugural edition of the Times Now Summit. We have someone with us who's, uh, uh, you know, not just the working president of his party, but he's also a minister in charge of critical portfolios in the state of Telangana. And this is a time, KT Ramarao, where you know there is a renewed push, as it were, uh, from the states because there is a sense that the centre is weakening and that regional parties now are going to play a bigger role in the days to come? Well, I don't think it's uh, the timing that we should be talking about. I think uh, the issue is uh, the federal structure of the country and the fact that India still remains a very strong union of states and that the states have a larger role to play with respect to, say, sociological uh, indicators, human development indicators or economic development indicators. So therefore, I think a combination of all three is what makes a, a, a nation or a state greater and better and stronger. Mm -hmm. So therefore, uh, the debate, the focus, I think, at least from our perspective, is on strengthening our own state and operating within the realms of uh, what has been given to us as a mandate. Mm -hmm. And also by extension, of course, uh, you know, stronger a state. You know, interesting you said our mandate is to strengthen our state. But what about the center, you know, uh, because when the BJP's footprint is shrinking, the regional parties have an opportunity of expanding their footprint. The beauty of parliamentary democracy is that uh, everybody's voted in for five years. So we've been voted in our state for five years to run the state. And uh, so as uh, the BJP being noted uh, uh, to the center, as you said, at, uh, as a union government uh, for five years. So therefore, irrespective of what happens in some state elections, I think the fact is we have to work with the union government, uh, irrespective of who leads it, mm. for the next four, four plus years. So therefore, while we have our own ideological differences, our own differences over how the economy is, how you know the country should be run, etc., etc., but like I said, mm. beauty of parliamentary democracy is we have to coexist, we have to work together, we have to have a civil working relationship, and that's what we'll strive for. Where does the TRS stand? You know, for some parties, there's this permanent riddle. Are you with the BJP? Are you against the BJP? Are you with the opposition bloc? Are you with the third front, fourth front? Where does the TRS stand? Well, life is not a zero-sum game, you know. We we take it up. Uh, we take up our uh, we take our decisions based on issues. For example, when the issue of uh, GST came up, you know, when they said one nation, one tax, we supported the idea because we are ideologically for it. But then when they said uh, CAA, we obviously opposed it and we voted against. So therefore, it depends on the issue mm -hmm. that they bring up. We're not ideologically aligned to them with everything that they do, but definitely when it comes to some uh, issues which are of national importance, we've been with them. But again, on, on other issues of national importance where we have ideological differences, we have different. Many would call that opportunist. Absolutely not. In fact, it's, that's the beauty of democracy, isn't it? See, we don't have to necessarily agree with each other on everything. At the same time, I think we, we can find areas where we can work together. But then and that stands in the way of you know, having a united opposition. Ideologically, you know, you're not in part of any bloc. You just go whichever way it is more suitable for you. That's not the point. You just, be, just the fact that you are in opposition does not mean you oppose everything that there is uh, that the government brings in. Has the Congress opposed GST? Has the Congress opposed everything that the BJP has brought in? Mm. Does that mean does that mean they are opportunistic as well? Mm. I don't think so. See, the fact is, in mature democracies, in democracies where uh, parties and uh, and leaders take positions based on the issue, I think uh, uh, you know our stand you know sort of indicates. Uh, the maturity of our party, the maturity of our uh, uh, democracy. You've opposed, you voted against the CA, yet you haven't passed a resolution against it in the state assembly. Why? We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. I mean, the, so far the government of India has not made any moves mm. with respect to CAA. There is a larger debate going on in the country. We are awaiting to see what government of India does because they, so far they have not issued any guidelines, so far they have not issued any sort of a, uh, a memo, so to speak. About the NRC. Absolutely. So therefore we are awaiting it and we'll cross but that. principally, are you with the NRC, against the NRC? As we have said in the past, as we have maintained in the past, we, when we have opposed and voted against the CAA, CAB rather, and now CAA. Mm. So therefore, if we have to look at NRC through the prism of CAA, then we are obviously going to oppose it. Mm. But government of India would like us to believe otherwise. So we are awaiting a detailed guideline from them on exactly how they perceive NRC, how they have conceptualized mm. NPR, because there is a lot of confusion around these three acronyms, mm. NPR, NRC, and CAA. Do so let's think, await. Do you think NPR is the first step towards NRC? It doesn't matter what I think or you think. I think because what matters. Because the NPR process has started in Telangana. Like I said, what matters, end of the day, is what the union government is wanting to do. Mm. Let them give clarity because Union Home Minister had said something on the parliament, in, mm. on the floor of the house, 
uh, in Parliament. Absolutely. And then later on, Prime Minister had said something diametrically mm -hmm. opposite. Mm -hmm. So therefore, we have to see what exactly is on their mind. I'm sure in a democracy, when protests happen and when people actually take to the streets, mm -hmm. governments are forced to rethink. So therefore, we hope and we believe that government of India will also start rethinking, start possibly moderating, mm -hmm. and start possibly coming out with solutions which are workable. And for the opposition, there shouldn't be opposition for the sake of opposition. It should be issue-based. But then, when you have a Congress which basically says that the opposition to BJP is absolute because it is a fascist party. That's Congress's viewpoint. It depends on whether you know, uh, uh, Congress as a party uh, would want to oppose everything blindly that the union government is going to do. That's, that's their prerogative. We have nothing to say on that. But at the same time, like I said, as you mature as a party, as a democracy matures, as, as we grow as a nation, I think it's important for us to understand there are areas we have to work together. There are areas. See, for example, on Article 370 abrog abrogation, we've supported the government. That is because we believe that was in the interest of the country. Mm -hmm. So therefore, there are issues where we have to toe the line of the government. There are issues where we have to oppose. And there are issues where we can stay neutral and abstain. So you, if you want to call it opportunism or ideological uh, 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 you know, uh, opportunism, that's your prerogative also. That's the beauty of democracy.